Hey, I'm Jared, and this is how I bake my characters inside Marmoset Toolbag. Baking your textures is one of the most technical tasks that is an absolute must-know when it comes to becoming a character artist. It's also one of the most satisfying steps when it comes to making a character for games. It's like you're crossing that midpoint, and now you can start to see your character in its finality. In the last video, I showed my process for getting UVs laid out. From here, we're going to pick up, and we're going to start to prep our model to ensure that we take advantage of all that Marmoset can offer. One quick thing to take note of is that you want to make sure that your mesh is assigned with the correct materials to correspond with our future texture sets. This will ensure that the baker bakes the meshes with the correct texture sets in mind. This step was done in the previous video, but you can see the results here with the red, blue, purple, green, and yellow materials. So the first step that I need to accomplish in this video is to make sure that all of my meshes are named correctly to take advantage of the file sorting to help reduce baking artifacts on our model. So at the end of last video, I went ahead and made sure that all of my meshes were clumped in a group folder with what the texture set that they were going to belong to was. From here, we're going to make sure that each mesh is given a name that will correspond with the low poly as well as the high poly model. Here you can see I just used the name head, but I also add the string underscore low after this. This designates that the mesh is going to be used as the low poly in the bake. When doing these names, they are case sensitive, so just make sure to keep that in mind. I use capitals as it works better for me. From here, I'm going to run through each individual mesh, and I'm going to give it that same exact name string at the end, underscore low. Once I've named the low poly, I'm going to move on to the high poly, and I'm going to do the same thing. For parity's sake between both meshes, I do like to copy the name string from the low poly in Maya and paste it into the high poly. This just ensures that I don't end up with any extra spacing or anything that's going to differentiate the two namespaces. The one thing that I do obviously change is I do change low to high while also making sure to keep the case sensitivity in mind. After we finish naming our high poly model, the next thing that we're going to do is set up the poly paint on our high poly. This is going to allow us to control how our ID map is going to end up being baked out. For example, on this armor, this metal material is going to be the same across the model, so I make sure that each piece of metal is going to be categorized as red. This isn't necessarily a required step because a baker can create this map without any of this info, but it's not smart enough to distinguish what each material is meant to be, so I find it easier to spend some time here so that I can create a controlled ID map. The last step we're going to take to get our model prepped is going to be to decimate the high poly. I like to save off a separate file that's going to be dedicated to this step. This just allows a little bit of wiggle room in case I want to make adjustments down the road. When choosing a value to decimate your model with, it really just depends. In most situations, I would say that 20% is a reasonable value for most all situations. You can lower it in some areas, but it really just depends on the amount of detail that you want to ensure that you preserve. For areas like the head, I do tend to push the values a little bit higher in order to preserve any poor detail that the model does have. After going through and decimating each one of my meshes, the next thing that I need to worry about is exporting out my model. Back in Maya, to export out the low poly, all I need to do is make sure to select the entire mesh and export it out as an FBX file. For naming, I'm going to call it orc underscore low. For the high poly, I could ultimately do the same thing, but obviously, depending on how big the overall mesh size is, that can make this file a little bit hard to manage. So for the sake of ease, I like to split my high poly into the same texture set folders as the low poly and export out each individual texture set. Doing all this prep will ultimately make your life a lot easier and give you the best results when it comes to baking, in my opinion. But now we get to the good part. Let's jump over to Marmoset and get our bake started. Now in our scene, the first thing that we're going to want to do is add a baker. We can get that by clicking on this little bread icon on the shelf. Once we've added that, we're going to want to load in our low poly and high poly models that we just exported. If we named our assets properly, all of our meshes should load properly and be slotted into the correct low and high poly folders. From here, we're going to go down to this path and we're going to establish where we want our bakes to be exported out to. Next, we want to make sure that we check multiple texture sets button to ensure that we're baking out all of the texture sets for all of our individual assets. For my bakes, I always like to bake at 4K just to make sure that I get the most out of my maps. For now, I just want to make sure that the only map that I'm going to be exporting is going to be my normal map. If you want to make any changes to any of the channels, you can click on the cog and make those changes depending on what you need for your final output. Now we'll come back up to the top of the baker and we're going to hit this P button. 
This is going to create a normal map for me and it's going to preview it to my model. Now I can do a quick inspection to see if I'm getting any type of baking errors because of things like faces intersecting or maybe the baker's not able to calculate the right ray distance. And this next part is the main reason I like to use Marmoset. If you take notice, I'm actually getting some baking issues, but Marmoset's tools allow for me to fix this stuff in real time. I can go ahead and make adjustments to the baking cage, or I can paint some offsets to the cage to help fix clipping in areas like some of the issues you see here around the islands. Before creating any of my final maps, I like to just work on polishing my normal map. This map is the quickest to generate as well as the easiest to iterate upon. By resolving the issues in my normal map first, this will also resolve them in any of the other utility maps that I decide to create as well. Once I'm to a place where I'm happy and I don't notice any more artifacts or issues, I can move on to the full bake. In Marmoset, you can bake out an array of a ton of different useful maps, which is another great feature, but for my uses, I only need the curvature, the thickness, the AO, the normals, and the vert color. Now make sure that all of these are checked and we can fire off our final bakes. Once the bakes are all finished, it may look like nothing actually changed on the model. But if we come down here to this little ball icon next to each of our maps, we can solo preview what the final map will look like on the model. And here's our final model. You can see the normal map applied to the mesh. It looks great. We can also see the ambient occlusion and how it's affecting the model. Next, we're going to take all of this stuff and we're going to put it inside Substance where we're going to start the texturing process for this character. With all that said, hopefully you found this info useful. Baking is one of those steps that requires a lot of prep to get a good result, but if you just follow the process, you'll always get a good result in the end, and it's nice to see your work finally coming together. If you have any suggestions for things that you'd like to learn in future content, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to see any of the future videos. In the next video, I'm going to be covering texturing this character, and then I'm going to follow it up with rendering the final model out. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, stay tuned. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.